Nicole Brown, and I'm your host for today's Half Hour with Ted Lasso. You can see their little faces, but joining me are three of the stars of my favorite show, Brett Goldstein, who plays Roy Kent and is also one of the talented writers and producers, Phil Dunster, who plays our fave, Jamie Tart, and the lovely Hannah Waddingham, who plays Rebecca Wilton. Hi, honey. How's the babies? Hi, darling. Oh, wow. Hello, Hello. Bet and Nicole Brown. Lovely to see you. How are you? It's the Bet and Nicole it's... Brown people. Give the love. Come give on. the love. I'm so happy. Come to see on. You guys. It's been too long since I've had these particular faces and squares in front of me. So I'm so happy to see you guys. Now, this Come is on. something where we're we're gonna talk for half an hour, and I want this to be an opportunity for people who already love the show to get some tidbits and also people that may not know the show yet. So, Brett, can you kind of catch us up on what Ted Lasso is all about and tell us about this season three, which is your most ambitious yet? Ted Lasso is the story of a man called Ted Lasso, who is an American football coach <laughs> who is brought over to England by Hannah Waddingham's character to um, coach a pre Premier League football team, soccer. He knows nothing of the sport, but gosh damn, he's got a good attitude. And he comes over and starts to change people's lives, and then those people change his life. And then it becomes a show about mental health and uh, uh, trouble mm -hmm. and... Uh, the darkness within and about love and togetherness and support and people trying to be their best selves while also dealing with their own shit from their past their present and their future nice nicely done so I, you know yeah yeah phil yeah can you give us a glimpse into the writer's room you know i have visions of this big board with diagrams the way you guys move the players around mm -hmm. when you're the diamond dogs but how do you guys write so well for every single person and how does the room work for you guys the room is like you're right, there are there are whiteboards all over the room and there, there will be a big board that has all the characters' names in, in columns and we will start adding stuff as we work out their stories. Then you start putting those stories together, what works thematically. There are things we know. There's a season arc board, there's an episode board, there's a character board and there's a joke board. And... Uh, oh. whenever someone says something funny or a particularly good joke, you guys put that on the board. So there's a board that just has jokes, shit, tons of jokes that can be used at any point if they're appropriate to the script. And uh, how do we know all the characters' voices? Because we've... Oh, also, it's basically like a massive group therapy. It's like a, a load of people uh, sharing their problems around the table <laughs> and then that all ends up in the, in the scripts. And... You learn how to want to talk to yeah, yeah, we're like, instead of dealing with this in therapy, let's make money out of it instead. So we're we're talking about mental health and changing and shifting. And I feel like, Phil, that Jamie's changed a lot in these seasons. And in the past, you know, he had everything that drove him was kind of like ego issues or dad issues or his quest for fame. But now it seems like it's deeper. Like even his issue with Zava doesn't feel like it's just jealousy. It feels like there's more to it. So how has it been developing this new version of Jamie? And um do you have any any input with the writers or are they helping you figure out how you want to navigate this new version of him? Because I'm loving where he is. Oh, yeah. Bless him. He's come so far, hasn't he? Really has. mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think you put you you make a really good point about like the reason that he is the way he is. And like we what was behind, you know, as an actor yourself, you'll know that like you're knowing you need to know, I guess you'd call it motivation. There's probably lots of books about that, but like what is driving each sort of action and it feels like he's learned through the sort of teachers around him through uh through ted but also and, and through roy kent but also i think a lot through keely really he's learned you know things like accountability and apologizing uh and i think that that has been something that he, his intention now is like a, it just has shifted it's shifted we can see that he's trying to do it better or nicer he's still just doing it as jamie Mm -hmm. uh and so i think it would feel us as an audience member i think we would we wouldn't uh appreciate that the shift has just happened all of a sudden it's not a linear thing it happens the, he learns the lesson he tries to get it right he sometimes get it wrong mm -hmm. but at least he's trying and then he just tries better harder next time they write so well it makes it feel like it's us that's writing it mm. is what i'd say uh, now, Brett, i would like as as one of the writers of the show, I would like to point out that as much as Phil says he didn't write anything, he did write the word that has become everyone's favourite word of this season, which is poopair. That was <laughs> Phil. 
So he is actually probably the most significant writer on the show. That's my favorite bit. I literally have taken, I took notes, you guys. I take notes when I watch the show and I literally wrote poopé. I wrote poop <laughs> and a dash. There and you go. Literally if it's if there's an Emmy going for writing, it will go solely to film for poopé. Why is it even well, funnier <laughs> you saying that? Why <laughs> basically? Okay, Hannah, it's your turn. Your relationship uh, with your ex-husband, the horrible Rupert, has been coloring a lot of, of Rebecca's decisions. But I feel like this season, she's kind of finding her power in other ways and she's finding a way to be a little freer, a little wackier. You ended up with a full bottle episode that was like the rom-com of my dreams. Are you <laughs> pleased with your alter ego and how she's handling life and all the struggles that come with it this season? Yes, mostly because sometimes she does handle it and sometimes she very much doesn't. And it can be a trigger of a glance, of a word, of an anything from anyone. And I think that is so realistic that we are not all suddenly together and that it can be spending time with one person like the, the psychic and there can be a one word trigger or literally seeing Rupert down the corridor or just seeing Rupert or Bex or whomever from that part of her in like five minutes before she was meant to see them. And you know how you're not quite ready for that? I love how that's written that that suddenly Rupert's there tapping her on the back when she's trying to get in to see Zara, or she suddenly turns away from the comfort of, of Keeley downstairs and suddenly there's her nightmare, which is Rupert and Beck standing there talking about their effing child, you know? So it's those moments when you're caught off guard, you probably would have been fine mm -hmm. two seconds later, but in that moment of softness where she's vulnerable and, and relaxed, just turning around. I think those, but those bits of writing are so clever. Mm -hmm. And even with the it, with the psychic, you know, when she when she says, you know, I think I'm done here. Gathers all her stuff together. It's like the new Rebecca has gone. No, do you know what? I'm not feeling this. But then it just takes one word, and everything falls apart. Yeah, it's really the the positioning of those moments. I think in this season particularly is really juicy. And how much of that is. I always wondered this as an actor, how much of this is on the page for you guys and how much it, of it is you guys knowing your characters so well that or like if, if, if they if they say uh, Rebecca sees uh, Rupert, does it then say and is and reacts or is that you just knowing that if she sees No, him, no, I think, I think they I think all the writers know now that there is a there is a I would say at I'm about the boys, there is a perfect where do the writers stop and we begin? Where do the, where do the characters stop and the, and the person begins? There is such a beautiful symbiosis now. Mm. I don't think anything like that needs to be there, even yeah. if it is here and there. You know what we do? It's something funny, genuinely, I'll tell you a real true thing that we do in the writers' room. I think in a first draft, you do write... Rebecca reacts, her face crumples, you know, so, so you, you'll put those sort of directions in. And then when it comes time to, we need to reduce the script because the script's 300 pages, and we'll now. get to a line like that. And we will literally say out loud, she's very good. And we'll delete the line yeah. because we know <laughs> she'll, do that. Yeah, she'll do that anyway. We don't need to spell it out. She's going to do that anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's, there's she's very good. Delete. We'll do that a lot. There's a moment and, and uh, there's a comment that uh, uh, Ted says about, um, about Roy's breath. It's a little tart, a Jamie Tartish tart in one of the uh, scenes. And the and as I'm watching him say it, I say, Brett's going to check his breath. He's going to check his breath. And then two seconds later, just slowly, Roy just lifts his hand to just make sure everything's OK. And there's little niceties like that throughout the show where you just knowing these characters so well and knowing how you play them. I just love the little delicious things you guys find, because honestly, your eyes supposed to be on Ted right now. And if you're not looking at Ted in that moment, you might miss what Roy is doing. But because you guys fill every frame with goodness, if you're in the shot, you're going to give us something. And I think that is just mm -hmm. a testament to your talent and just how great you all are. I just think. Like, yes. so great. Okay, so Brett, you have this yeah. embarrassment of riches as a writer. You uh, you have great actors, but you also have really musical people. You have Jeremy, who's a musician in real life. You have this beautiful Hannah, who's an accomplished singer. How fun is it to write these outside talents into your storylines? Because Jeremy had that great moment in the Amsterdam episode. Oh, that's and fabulous. Wasn't it called? Very good. That whole episode, oh, by the way. 
the whole episode was my is now my favorite. Um, will we ever get a full on musical episode of this show? Because I know there's a lot of people that can perform in this cast. If we, we could uh, justify a full musical episode, it could be Beard in, taking some of his some of his little edibles, and he drew yeah. it. it's done. I wrote it. It's done. I, I did think uh-huh. it would okay, be a Beard turns left moment again. Mm-hmm. I'd love to. I mean, look, you know, I'm I'm uh, openly, you know, look, beard beard after hours is, you know, I, it's because I wanted Brendan to Hulu, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I love his dancing. I mean, it's literally the most complicated way to get. How can we get Brendan <laughs> dancing in Hulu? And with <laughs> Hannah, I'm always trying to get her to sing. And she's always like, I, I don't think I should sing. And I'm like, you, you should, should always, always be singing. Always sing. You shouldn't be speaking ever. I don't want to, I don't want to hear you chatting when you could be singing <laughs> with that voice. <laughs> I agree. So yeah, I'm always trying to get something. I love that with Higgins as well, because it also feels very, um, that's the, the, the reality is you can't just whack in everyone's party trick. It has to be earned. And I think that Amsterdam one is a perfect thing of like, for all the things we know about Higgins and all he's been through, this sort of moment of pure, it's just very pure. Like he 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 gets to live a sort of fantasy for a moment and he's good and he's been, you know, it's, it's something he practices and it's like, a, it feels, at least to me, it feels earned and it feels genuine. And it's, it's a really, really lovely moment, but it isn't, what's the word? Gratuitous. It isn't, yeah. just, oh, because he can play, you know what I mean? It like, we built three years to get to him to there, you know? Yes, Phil. I, I think as well, uh, yes, if I may be so bold. You may. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that in a nutshell is it was a perfect example of uh, if, if the show's good at anything, uh, it's, it's really good at those things not happening. Someone has said this before, not happening in a vacuum. And you, there is the opportunity for these people, whether it's to show good traits that they've learned or to like, you know, do their party piece or whatever. Uh, it feels like there have been there's the opportunity to do the good thing and it's been earned through many times of like maybe choosing to do the wrong thing you know like hannah was saying about rebecca's journey she's like chosen to act through pride or like chosen or like has has happened to or you know or or you know roy will use anger instead of using you know this thing that he's learned and i think that it's really it's the thing that it's really good at is the show's really good at is earning those moments and so you know I mean, frankly, you know, Hannah's earned every single moment she should sing all the time. But uh, but it makes it even more special when it's just, you know, it, it, that was an example that's made even more special. And the same, same thing goes for, like, Ted's puns. Like, I'm a fully card-holding member of pun all the time. Um, but I also feel like... Uh, you so are. Yeah. <laughs> In real world. It's, it's 96% out. of my personality. There's nothing really else there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yes it's and i feel like the same thing goes for all of the characters you could just have one character and go bu- bu- do their thing do their thing do their thing do their thing do the catchphrase but there's so many different versions of that for so many different members of cast which is no doubt really hard for the writers because they've got to like, earn that for everybody but yeah so i think um the the party trick analogy can be extended to like moments of good heart being mm-hmm. shown I think I've solved it. I think I've fucking solved it. I've solved it right now. Here's how it's going to happen. How's it going to happen? Language, boy. How's it going to happen? Here's how it's going to happen, young lady. You listen up because this is your future. I'm listening. You are going... Rebecca is going to tell a story that before she met Rupert, she only sang. Yes! And then Rupert, you know, broke her. She now talks. And at the end of the season, when she finally she defeats Rupert, only gonna be she will singing. sing. Shut and then she will up, sing up. for the rest of her days. <laughs> it's good! It's kind of like the Little Mermaid, didn't he? Just so yeah. 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 <laughs> I love, we're like, she's so great because she earns those singular moments when they happen. And we're like, she will sing all the time now. <laughs> She's quite wafty, the mermaid, wasn't Little Mermaid. But... Yeah. <laughs> um, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, the Jamie and the Roy uh, friendship. It is truly love the love story um, that we all have wanted. And I want to know how that has been, you guys working together. Did Brett know how to ride a bike before that moment? And how has it been showing the evolution <laughs> of this wonderful friendship? Uh, I thought the thing that was amazing about that is that 
uh, they both, sh the thing that they share, the person that they have shared, as it were, that they have in common, uh, is the person that I think that they have both been most sort of intimately vulnerable with. And I think that there is this shortcut, um, sort of emotional shortcut bridge um, that means that they have that closeness. And they also like, they also understand each other in a way that football is a very specific kind of breed of human. Mm -hmm. And I think that you're sort of pedestaled and it, you're, it's quite isolating, I'm sure, in a, in a way that, you know, that few people can truly understand the intricacies of being a footballer. And I think that Jamie and Roy, different ends of the spectrum of their career or timeline or whatever, um, they have a sort of, they have a, what's the word, like a, um, uh, like a mode of communication that is like, it's like a, you know, they can get on, they can, communicate really easily but they just know there's like a, the joy of it for an audience is that they're the last two people it's who would have that relationship mm -hmm. and yet yeah. it makes the most sense because it's that emotional vulnerability that they have shared with that one person that they have in common and therefore they have that that um that language together who's yeah. made who's made them both a better person i was about to say she's changed both of you and that for it to make yeah. you better so that also fits and sp speaking of that keely um hannah you and juno have created i've said this a thousand times that you created one of my favorite sisterhoods on television and what i love about this season is that it also shows that even friendships ebb and flow because as her career goes another direction you guys can't talk and see each other as often but you still connect can you talk a little bit about what it's like to form that friendship on screen and off and you know your like friendship goals across the board you too as well yeah do you know what i i um do you know and i've talked about this a lot of you know if there had been one of us that wasn't there and the other one was with somebody else and how the the just the perfect timing of both of us you know being chosen to do this being available to do this and we really can't imagine doing it with anyone else and and like you were just saying about you know since we wrapped in November, Juno and I have nigh on been playing phone tag apart from the odd message here and there. And like you saw when I came on here, I was genuinely, I'm genuinely, I was so looking forward to seeing her. Mm. And that thankfully is a thing that we don't even have to try and leave on the screen. Mm. And even though the writing of course is brilliant and it is ridiculously groundbreaking because there should be more of this of mm -hmm. course oh, but course. there doesn't seem to be very much mm -hmm. um still ridiculously um i think that what what she and i have in spades is a thing that perhaps the writer's room can't even touch upon which is both of us would literally lie down and let the other one step over to get where they needed to go and it's That's it's it. a thing that you either have as don't. women in particular, I don't, I don't think men need to worry about it as much. Women either have that deep love and respect for each other or they don't. So we both consider, consider ourselves very lucky to have been cast with each other. But you know, I the think... great thing about the two of you is that you have it for everyone. This is not just a, a, a Juno and Hannah thing. You guys extend that love to every woman you encounter and that's what makes you so special. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know how to be any other way. Absolutely, same kiddo, same. So in case someone hasn't had a chance to catch the latest season of Ted Lasso, what's the one thing that comes to mind that might entice them to start binging this season? You got three minutes, share it amongst yourselves. BG, BG, shoot. I mean, if, you, if, if after season two, you're not you're not interested, I don't think this is gonna bring you over. But <laughs> yes, if, it you, is. if you got- I just encourage well, you to start talking, don't say that. Well, as in, I'm like, I'm, a, I'm hoping you've invested this far, keep going like if you got i mean season two ends in such an exciting way if you if you end season two and go nah i don't care then i don't think we've got our job this is this is not the show for you yes, yeah yes, Hannah, Hannah yes, can Hannah, tell Hannah, this no, better. Can i just say i disagree oh. because i think that even if you hadn't seen the previous two seasons this is going to be a controversial statement there is such a strong thread red thread through it all that you could if you're smart which we lean into the audience being smart you could decipher what has come before because the writing through it is so beautiful thank you very much you're true this is true lady this yeah. is true phil i don't know if you can top that but you can try there's another dance people like oh. the dancing 
And there's dancing. There's another dance. Yeah, it's a dance. Wait, hold on. What? I've never missed something. <laughs> well, I guess you just have to watch it and find out, Hannah. Oh, well. Oh, cheeky. Oh, there is another dance. Cheeky. Is there another? There is another dance. Cheeky. There is another dance. I thought is you meant an emotional dance. dance. <laughs> well, well listen, that. that too. That too. That too. <laughs> you know what? Again, wordplay. I'm just, just trying to, you know. <laughs> Can I just show you something that Please. I just yeah. realised is in the back of my shot that you can't see that I haven't even put there? One second. What is it? Uh oh. Uh, oh, oh, uh, I got it. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, Phil, she loves uh, you. She loves you, Phil. That's I so love nice. Me some dumb stuff. She loves yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, she <laughs> loves you and licks you. This is, a good, this is beautiful. As is Aww. your background. That's really lovely. Well, listen, it's guys, I don't, think we, don't. I don't think we could end on anything better than that, unless you'd like to say something to Hannah for that, Phil. I love you very much. And uh, that was a I wonderful I love you even more for giving it to me. I'm waiting I, for my one from you, Brett. I've got a whole fucking pack of cards for you. I know. You With, need to watch your mouth on this half, your mouth. half hour. You watch your mouth. <laughs> God, <laughs> Can I say something about... Uh, my shirt, please. Yes, <laughs> let's say something about your in. shirt. We got a minute. I, I got boobies on my shirt. I got boobies. There's a lot more than boobies. Oh, and... Sit down. This is censored. Sit down. There's more than boobies. Okay, it's going off the rails. I'm sorry oh, about that. Lady buttons there. No, no, no. We're going to end it now. It's going off the rails. Thank oh, you no. to our friend. No, no. <laughs> Thank you to our friend at Apple TV Plus and to Hannah, Phil, and Brett for joining us today and to everyone watching. Thank I you. I love you, Hannah. I love you, Phil. I love you, Brett. I love you. I love you all. That is the brown